I have analyzed about a hundred thousand matches in PUBG, player unknown battleground, and came up with a few interesting graphs, diagrams, and heat maps. If you're here to see those, skip ahead to this time to check out the results. And if you first want to listen to me blabbering about how PUBG Data API works, how I scrape the map image, and a little bit of my personal gaming experience with PUBG, I'd be delighted to share. Hello and welcome to Games Computers Play. Today's video is a bit unusual. We're not going to play a game with coding, but use coding to analyze a game, PUBG. If you've been living under a rock, PUBG is, at least as of right now, the most popular video game in the world. According to Wikipedia, about 1.2 billion with a B, people played it and it's the highest number of players any video game ever had. It's a pioneer of battle royale style games with a very simple but rather elegant premise. 100 people are parachuted onto an island, the last one of them alive is the winner. PUBG offers a few maps to play on, most famous being Wrangel, a fictional abandoned Russian island in Black Sea. And it is my favorite game location ever. It looks gorgeous. It captures the spirit of Off the Beaten Path Russia it's just a piece of eye candy I never get tired of looking at. Other places are okay too. Oh, and if you're a cheapskate like myself, since January of this year, PUBG is free. Well, I don't want to talk about the game itself too much, but rather about an interesting and rare feature that not many games offer. Publicly available game data. That's the data I decided to play with and share some of the results in this video. Anyone can apply for access to the game's API, and I did just that. It's well documented and it's quite straightforward. For each match, you get a so-called telemetry file, a 10-15 megabyte list of all the events in the match. Who landed where, went to which location, which weapon was picked up, fired, and of course, caused an untimely demise. Free API has a limited access rate, so I had to run it for a couple of weeks to collect a decent amount of data points, but that wasn't a big problem. Here's a brief overview of the data I've got. As you can see, beautiful Erangel is the most popular map, although not by far. First person perspective is about twice as popular than third person, something I didn't really expect, but I think it's great. Another thing that I didn't see coming is that team mode is about twice as popular as solo. As for the dates of all the matches I collected, they are from the end of April, beginning of May 2022, that's season 17 of PUBG. Alright, now that I had the data, I need some place to plot it on, namely the game map. I also wanted something with a higher resolution that I could find online. What to do, what to do? I found this site, I think it's official, but not sure, where you can browse and zoom into the PUBG maps Google Earth style. Okay, that should work too. Alright, let's put everything together and create a few maps with this data. And if in the beginning of the video you opted to skip the blabbering, you should be joining right about now. Hello again! And let's start with landings. These are the hot places, most popular places for players to land. Each dot, each cyan pixel on the map is a place where someone landed. Nothing really surprising here. People want to get closer to the big cities, to the buildings. Most of the locations seem to get some traffic, with only a couple of places standing out. Pachinki, as it's right in the middle of the map, and school, because everybody loves school. Miramar surprised me a little bit. Los Leones, despite being the biggest city on the map, has more tumbleweeds than people wanting to land there. There are a couple of unexpectedly popular places, though. Hacienda del Patron, and Pecado. Let's add a twist to the landing map and show humans and bots using different colors. Blue for humans and orange for bots. Here's what you would find. All those landings in the middle of nowhere that on the map look like background noise, 
were actually bots. Almost no human would land not near a building. There are fewer bots in the human heavy areas like school and hospital. In the areas where both humans and bots land, humans seem to be more precise, landing much closer to the target. Bots sometimes have their favorite landing areas in the middle of nowhere or something. I just mentioned bots quite casually, but I know it's a hot topic. The community was not super happy when bots started to appear in the game. Developers, meanwhile, said it's a necessary addition to keep length of matching queues at bay. Personally, as I stand very little chance against most of the humans I meet, I welcome bots. Casual mode, where you have 90% of bots, is my favorite way to enjoy PUBG. But anyway, I'm trying to be unbiased. Here are the distributions of the number of bots in matches. On Erangel, the casual mode is clearly seen. It must be those spikes in the 90% area. As for the rest of it, developers generally were telling the truth when they say that the number of bots is mostly limited to 20%. However, there is a weird small hill around the 60-70% to 70 mark. Are those warm-up matches you get when you haven't played for a while? Maybe, I don't know. So, let's move on. Here is the death heatmap. Each death is represented by a red pixel, and where there are too many pixels on top of each other, they start to glow hot white. It actually follows landing spots quite closely, as most of the teleportations to Pearly Gate occur in the first minutes of the game. Here are some highlights. Wait, let's be fancy here. Here are the top 5 deadliest places on Erangel. Number 5. Prison's main building. On Erangel, the time does you. Number 4. Gatka. More like, haven't Gatka any health points left. Alright, this one's pretty bad. Number 3. Sosnovka. Military base. C-shaped building. As in, see you in another life. Number 2. School. As in, here's a school of fishes you'll be sleeping with. And finally, number 1. Pachinki the deadliest place on the map. One notable mention. Shelter. Something you won't be able to see on a regular map, but on the death map you can clearly see the outlines of underground facilities. That's pretty cool. On Miramar, death hit zones kind of follow the landing spots too. Hacienda del Patron. Power Grid, Pecado. As for the other maps, we have the bus terminal on Tayago and boot camp on Sanku. Alright, let's move on. In the raw data, there are all kinds of information that you can find, including weapons that players use to put return to sender stamp on each other. Let's build a diagram of that. Percentages that I'm going to mention is from the total number of deaths. Not too many surprises here either. Vehicular assaults are the least popular way to send someone off. 0.6%. Melee is another not too popular way to give out buckets to kick. 0.8%. With bare hands being the most popular weapon. Next thing to make you push daisies is the environment. I couldn't really figure out how to separate bleeding out and blue zone damage, but it all should be here, and it all amounts to about 6%. And finally, firearms. This is the reason about 92% of players take the dirt nap. Let's take a closer look. Handguns are a rather unpopular way to make your opponents pining for the fjords. 0.5%. Next, light machine guns. Also not a very popular choice when it comes to preparing some warm food. About 2%. Too bulky, I guess. Throwables. Cooked to perfection, those are the great things to make opponents cash their chips. A little difficult to master, though. Another 2%. Shotguns. Very dramatic, very cinematic. Good choice inside the building, bad choice anywhere else. 5%. SMGs. Lots of bullets per second, but there's something unsatisfying about them. 10%. Sniper rifles. Now we're getting to some decent stuff that can put someone on the stairway to heaven. I like when I have a sniper rifle and see someone from far away. I hate when someone has it and sees me from far away. 10%. percent 
DMR. It stands for Designated Marksman Rifle, apparently. Kind of a sniper rifle, but with automatic reloading. A useful feature when you're trying to make someone quit their breathing habit. 14%. And finally, and just look at this thing. 49%, almost half of all tickets to a farm upstate are issued by this class of weapon. Assault rifles. Final thing about death maps. There's a deathmatch mode in PUBG where two teams run around one secluded location killing each other multiple times. Uh, some of the files I downloaded were from such matches. This is what it looked like. And the final map for us to look at, the map of the coordinates of the last circle in the game. Final circles seem to be distributed pretty evenly, with, with only faraway corners like Zharki or Kamishki getting to be the final battleground a little less often. And I cannot ignore the final circles on those small islands on Miramar with no bridges to them. That must have been exciting. Alright, this is it. Hope you enjoyed this little parachuting into the world of data. It's actually quite fascinating that PUBG makes the data readily available and I absolutely laud them for it. I'll put the maps and graphs from this video somewhere if you want to look at them closely. The link should be in the description. Like and subscribe if you like this video and see you in another one. Bye.